pretty happy. Tell me about China. How is China? How is Chengdu? Did you Chengdu or did you Chengdu? Wait, I had a whole intro. Oh, my bad. Go on. Talking counter. <laughs> if there's a roster change in your favorite team, who are you going to call? Talking counter. <laughs> if there's a CS update and it don't look good, who are you going to call? Talking counter. Oh. That's all my energy expended for the day. I'm, I'm out now. All right. All right. Wow. We'll carry it from here. Um, man, that update was kind of a little bit of a limp dick, wasn't it? Yeah. So, sorry. That I, I just thought of that in the shower and I thought I'm really low on energy at the moment. How can I contribute to that? I just thought if I get it out of, out of the way early, now I can coast. Now we can talk about China if you'd like, Jason. Yeah. How was China? Sorry. Ni hao, Jason. Ni howdy. China was great. I had a fucking banging time. Chengdu, never been there before. I think I've been to Wuhan, Beijing, Shanghai um, before over the last, well, since 2008, I've been going to China. Uh, never never even heard of Chengdu before it popped up. We were talking to, I think it was like Mark Winther late last year, and he mentioned that was going to be the city. And I was like, what the fuck? I've never heard of that place. But they'd been there once upon a time in esports, uh, something to do with pandas and it was great. I, I thought it was a really nice city, very green. Um, we, we got up to a couple of bits and bobs, went out to this place called Eastern Suburban Memory. It, th- this is what it was for me. It was an event that felt like, you know, years ago in the sense of not that things were antiquated, that we were traveling, that we were doing something, that we were getting to make the most of the place we were in as well as have a Counter-Strike event, which is, I think, kind of the whole point of it. So I had a great time. Yeah, I figured it was going to be a cool, a cool city to be in. So that's that makes me. It look. I mean, everyone on Instagram on socials was posting all positive, fun things about being in China. Did it feel like? Uh, I know the the players got the the rock star treatment. Was it was it apparent to you guys as well? Mm, uh, no, not really, <laughs> because that's the thing. Like we're not really on their streams. You know, the, yeah, they don't yeah. even see us because they watch the the Chinese broadcast, right? So there was an odd fan here and there who would ask for a photo or something like that but nothing anywhere near the level of of what the players got Um, it was apparent because we saw it unfolding yanko we saw some wild scenes that's for sure some things that i never thought it it was like one direction was um you know in in a city it was it was crazy the amount of people out the front of the hotels um and like flocking around the players all the gifts and stuff that they were getting like that that was pretty wild um i've never seen a fanfare for players like that before even previously going to china um, yeah so that was crazy and that frail. picture of yakinder from liquid was was wild yeah and the video that monacy posted <laughs> yeah um but yeah as freya very much like to point out, you know, I was there with FaZe five years ago and it wasn't (laughs) anywhere near those levels. But someone told me it's also because CS is much bigger in China now because in the meanwhile, they sorted stuff out with Perfect World and the servers and whatnot. So actually, more people have picked up on the game. It has a larger player base. So the game just all around is more um, popular. But yeah, from... And it's also like that at other events like at the major there was a lot of chinese fans just always like waiting for players outside the hotel and all of that so it was pretty wild to be honest at some point it became a little bit like too much i think i think like they're missing a little bit of i guess it's a cultural thing i don't know you know some of the social cues and what's like too much for example <clears throat> we had a kbbq place in the mall across the the hotel so me, Chad, Alex, Trace went to eat and Nico was there with his girlfriend, right? And, you know, just you could, swarmed. like, 10, 10 minutes later, you know, a couple of guys just walk into the restaurant while they're eating and, like, asking for a photo and for a autograph. It's like, for me, that's, like, over the line, you know? Like, <laughs> let the man sure. eat. You know, if you're so keen about getting, like, whatever, wait until he finishes eating and starts leaving the restaurant and, you know, like, then you can ask him for for something and i think they also had like groups and stuff so they would talk and then you know there was a line of 30 people outside the restaurant when he was done 
Yeah, that sweaty. happened pretty quick, right? Yeah. When players were like spotted, how quickly other people would would like appear. That was pretty wild. But um, there was different fan groups there that we got to interact with. There was there's a couple of blokes from Phase that uh, Alex and I were well not from Phase from a Phase fan club in China. They had like seventy thousand plus members. They were telling us, and the two of the guys would translate the content that Phase do in English into to Mandarin or Chinese or the Cantonese um, and you know distribute that I don't know if that was legally or illegally but it, regardless um, h- helping to you know spread the the message of phase throughout China and th- those lads were pretty cool um, Alex and I talked to them a couple of days when we were walking back and forth from the venue they had like these handwritten letters that they wanted us to give I had this one girl at front of the hotel be like oh can you give this to Twist and um, this one guy Jerry he had a uh, a Juice World CD to give to Rops because Rops is into that type of music. So they they kind of like even look at they've done, done more thoughtful gifts than I've ever done for a girlfriend in my entire life. So I was like, <laughs> holy shit! Like they, they they really care about this. There was I was just going through my Instagram messages because there was this one one girl and I can't find it, so uh, I'm not sure where it disappeared to. But I think her name was Haley. And I spoke to her briefly and she had these uh, fans with, with calligraphy that she had done for Alex and I that she gave to us as gifts. Um, and she said she's a massive fan of the podcast and she listens to the podcast and she was looking forward to the next um, the next episodes oh, she's and whatnot. Shout out. Yeah, so I, I hope I hope I, I was just I'm pretty sure it was Haley. I was I can't find it in the Instagram messages. I am becoming a bit of a boomer, so maybe I've done something wrong here. But um, yeah, Yanko's bang on. Like for us, we were kind of just witnesses to to the the madness that was going down and there was security at the hotel and stuff but this is the thing i i don't think there was ever an issue of people feeling like threatened i think it was more an issue of just people eventually being a little bit annoyed by the fact that they were being treated like big wig celebrities would be uh, in the in like the rest of the world, right? Like people running up for autographs and I, like that. That was the kind of level it was. So Bro, not being able to do anything without like people around you, I think for the players may have become a little bit annoying after time. You you had dudes just going up and down in the elevator, just waiting for you know someone to walk in and then ask for a photo <laughs> in the elevator. I saw a guy in the gym who walked in, or like two guys walked in. One of them was like had advanced sneakers, jeans. Yeah, you know, a backpack, <laughs> and he's like getting up on the treadmill because he's like exercising, quote unquote, you know. And actually, he's just there also to maybe get an autograph or something. And then you ha- then you had like people down at the, you know, where the gym area is and the spa and all of that. Like you all, you needed to show your key card and like fill out, you know, like your room number, name, all this sort of stuff because you know they're just sort of hounding like on on whichever area they feel like because you know you had fans who who had their room in that hotel you know it's not like you weren't allowed to just walk into the hotel randomly right so i think it's different where players get to recognize in a lot of spots i think in scan you know in copenhagen or in sweden if you go everyone's going to recognize you know guys like nico and whatnot liquid players and so on uh phase players but i think here is like where they really have that like chad said sort of a pop star vibe to it where people are actually like losing their minds when they see you and you get you know swarmed and everyone wants like a piece of you and all of that stuff so definitely a different experience for everyone involved but i think regardless of all of that stuff i think it was really it was fun to see how excited they were for you know an event of iem's magnitude uh, with those teams and players to to come to to China, especially in the arena too, probably a little bit too excited, <laughs> you sure. know, like, and, and I think they were trying to do a, you know, a good job. They were trying to, you know, turn off x-ray a lot on all of that stuff. But then if you just do that all the time, you, you lose a lot of the hype and uh, the excitement. But uh, yeah, like They're they were really G2 fans. cheering for everything. They're like, they're, they're, I think that like, I, I didn't experience it the same. We were behind the stage. Um, and obviously we weren't casting into the audience, right? So also some of the equipment, um, because of where we were, it wasn't up to snuff of what we would traditionally have at an ESL event. So I think there was maybe some compromises in the audio setup. Uh, so the, the and, and also I think if you watch the games from home, you would have seen that the way the crowd interacts, it's more like, I, I was talking to Alex about this and I referenced it more like a movie in the sense that, you know, when you're watching a comedy film, you're going to laugh at a funny moment, 
right? Or if you're watching a horror film, you're going to have a jump scare or you're going to gasp at something it's that is meant to like be like shocking. Like a laugh track or like a... Right? Yeah. So for them, it wasn't like ambient cheering the entire time and people doing like cheers throughout while the, the rounds are starting. It was when something of note happens, they would make some noise, which is kind of how we do our job when we're casting. Like, you know, you react to a thing that's happening and otherwise it's like, it's the build, 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 kill happens, right? Obviously when G2 was playing or FaZe, teams that they were, uh, have big fan bases there, I think the reactions were a little bit different. Um, but overall, it was a it definitely, and, and this is the thing that like people... People who want to critique it from home, sitting in their bedrooms, who have never been to a Counter Strike event in the world, uh, you know, are going to go, oh yeah, this or that about it. Um, I don't like the crap. I don't like the cheating stuff, of course. Like I don't like the trying to assist with with audio cues to help help players. But at this point, you know, I'm just that's nature of the beast. It 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 just is what it is I, at the moment. I think probably uh, f for the next one, like you know, for Shanghai or something, there should probably be a PSA or something, just a quick video to, to especially if there's going to be a lot more people. Mm. Well, that, yeah. that uh, might that might be hard to to pull off because that's going to be perfect world side of things. Yeah, well, I, I, that's the thing. I don't know. I, the, what do you it's mean? It's hard to what's, the conversation. Well, what's hard to pull off? Like make a well, no, the video actual just... the actual thing isn't hard to pull off. But I'm just saying, uh, you know, I I personally don't have a direct line of contact to Perfect World to like bring that that up as. An this issue. is your chance, Jason. Talk yeah. to him directly right now. All right. Yeah. Hi, Perfect, Perfect World. World. I'm Jason Moses O'Toole. Yeah, let's hook it up with maybe a PSA to prevent the, the if crowd If anyone needs uh, cheating, a, a, direct, a direct line to Perfect World, Jason, it's me, okay? Not you. <laughs> True. <laughs> right. If well, anyone's listening you know... to this, reach out to me, <laughs> not Jason. <laughs> right? I have a, there's a lot of other tips in my head. All right. I'll, get, I'll, I'll find the email. I'll pass it on to you, Yago. You can do the dirty work. There you go. And just yeah. have like a video of Nico saying something and get it translated into Mandarin. I'll fucking bang, get that. Done. I'll get that motherfucker to speak it out in Chinese, bro. If that's what it takes, I'll, <laughs> I'll get it done. He'll read it What's out in the Chinese. Wrestler? Give him the John Cena. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Nico even was like, this is the one thing. At one point, I saw Nico in the lobby with, I swear to God, it was like maybe 50 fans surrounding him, like a swarm, like, a, like you're at a concert and there's a mosh pit. And but he had, I think he had incited it somehow, probably just by being Nico. But then he was throwing G two jerseys in the air, and I was like, "What the Sweet. fuck is going on here, man?" I didn't hang around to find out. I got out of there pretty damn quick. But I, I just saw, and I was like, "Who the fuck?" I couldn't. I literally could not see from the outside looking in to the middle of the group who was there until I got outside and I could see his his little what's his hair do? Is it a quiff? I don't know. His well maintained mane just popping out above all of the heads. And I was like, wow, he's throwing G2 jerseys up in the air. The crowd was going nuts. It was it was all popping off. The weather was actually pretty nice as well, just as a bit of a segue. The weather got pretty nice towards <laughs> yeah. the last couple of days. Yeah, I think I also was... a, a big difference is, I think for us, why we were raving about Chengdu too, is like the air felt like air. It wasn't as stuffy as you know Beijing or Shanghai. Like it, it felt more fresh. There was a lot more green. Um, very green where where we were you know and you had these different areas the one the chat mentioned that were like super cool i think also for me man like even in just five years since i was last there um things, with have, phase. things have changed <laughs> yeah, with phase and when we got tracked by <laughs> in the semifinal, 16 16 2 um things have like you know improved a lot sure like for me always the, the biggest problem was probably the the communication aspect right but nowadays everyone has this app like where they just speak into you know the phone they just use a google translator and, yeah and, and it's like it's very easy to use i guess also just in general you know you have access to e-sims and all of that stuff so you always have that data wherever you go um you just pre pre install like a couple of apps you know a vpn and alipay or something like that um and you're pretty much good to go. It's actually super easy. You don't even need your wallet. You just bring your phone around and everything's on your phone. And yeah, you're you're Gucci. So I agree with, I'm on board with Chad. It was also nice because, you know, nowadays we go to the same spots for IEMs, right? So it's nice to go somewhere where you've never been before and do a little bit of exploring and just like um, soaking it up in a way. We, we, a um, of we had to use Uno. like... Yes, we had to use like Alipay or, or WeChat. My Alipay is like fucking cooked. I couldn't get that to work, but my WeChat was fine most of the time. But Yanko's bang on. Like I think the technology that like having eSIM just changes the game. 
Like the fact that you you don't have to worry about data at all, like being an issue, and you don't have to run and find a, a Starbucks for Wi-Fi or anything. It's like, oh, thank God, bro. It's it's I like it. this is not a political podcast, so we're not gonna get into it. But there's so many like so much interesting stuff about China. You know, from the moment you land and you're like go through immigration and all of that stuff, I feel like the only thing I didn't do was like jerk off in a cup and give them a sample of that. <laughs> I feel like they had everything else, right? But yeah, I don't know. I know it what al- you mean. It also allows for a lot of like, like a lot of stuff is expedited, easy to do, you know? So it was just interesting seeing it like in a, you know, experiencing a different sort of way of doing things. Did it leave you with like a a positive anticipation of what a major in china is going to be like because it'll be the first the first time we do an event of this scale in china are you trying to tilt yanko like what what are you <laughs> what, what are you doing like are you, are you, i made my trying piece. to incite violence here jason no, 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 man. Like, I told, on, i'm man? getting them i'm getting them the perfect world contact like i'm doing everything Fine. i can i just want to know if you if, if 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 ever the thought crossed your head that was like Oh, the major is going to be pretty cool here. Not due to who may or may not be working. I like Shanghai anyway. Okay. I I think it's going to be great. I think with that type of fan turnout in in Chengdu, Chengdu has what, a population of 22 million, I think we researched while we were there. Um, Which was shocking. It's like on on par with Beijing and shit. That is actually a lot. But but Shanghai being probably an easier port for people to f- to come into from around uh, Southeast Asia or essentially the world because I don't know how many fans we're going to get there who aren't uh, Chinese fans and it also is going to depend on the type of arena they pick and the amount of people that they're going to be able to have in there. But I imagine it's going to be a, a large turnout. And the other thing is because. They definitely hyped, like I saw them taking pictures with Lin Vision players, or you'd see some of the Steel Helmet guys around, like Captain Mo or DD or QZ, which is DD's brother, was there as well. And they were definitely had fanfare around them. But the thing is, it's they're not just barracking for Chinese teams. They're almost like Australian audience in the sense of like, well, if there's an Aussie team here, we're gonna go fucking like nuts for it. It's gonna be sick. But the likelihood is our teams aren't good enough and we like G2, we like FaZe, we like Na'Vi, we like this, we like that, right? So there's going to be teams that these these uh, fans are going to go for. So I think obviously the biggest issue is going to be time zone and I understand that. But in terms of the turnout um, that we're going to have live, I think it's going to be great. I think that in terms of the fan stuff that we were talking about, Perfect World slash PGO is definitely going to have to use CAC and now Chengdu as examples of, hey, like we need to either i don't want to say like up the security but maybe up the secrecy a little bit more of where we are but i imagine it won't take very long for things to leak so i i don't know there's gonna have to be something done with that because i imagine that type of fanfare will be on steroids uh from Chengdu to the major just because of the sheer volume of people but i'm excited for that type of event i think um I think it's great to service different areas of the world and and different time zones I understand doesn't do, do wonders for where our biggest portion of the player base is or at least our most competitive portion uh, being from Europe but that's just sometimes the way the cookie crumbles motherfuckers the world sure. don't revolve around you um, so yeah I, I, I'm excited for it I, I'm looking forward to it for sure something that uh, I think is a nice way to cap off off the year Um I wanted to talk about the place that we went a couple of times, the place that Yanko referenced Uno. We went out one night. Uh, we had found this this area because Rush and myself were filming content. We kind of did these little like travel videos. So me and Rush and Alex did one and then Hugo and Harry did one. Um, and we one of the areas that they took us to was this um, Eastern Suburban Memory or Eastern Suburb Memory, one of the two. But either way, it was this awesome, like, it used to be a valve factory back in the 50s, and it's kind of been terraformed into this place with a bunch of, like, fashion outlets, really nice restaurants, some more street-based restaurants, um, cool, like, ways that they've used the parts of the old valve factory and turned it into, I guess, more like artwork and stuff. Uh, there's some bars around there. One night we just thought, oh, fuck it, let's just walk into a bar. And then we stayed there playing. Uh, Harry and Hugo came and joined us later. I reckon we stayed there playing Uno for like, what, four hours? <laughs> it wasn't called Uno. What was it called? A Hino? A Hino, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we played House Rules. Same, yeah. At one point, Jason, I had to draw 16. Ooh, that <laughs> sucks. Rough. That's when you know you're, you've lost the game. Like there's It was no, brutal. There's no coming back from a 16 draw. No, it was, it was well. Yeah, it was tough. We played a lot of games. Um, Trace was actually winning quite a few, you know. But there was that was that was a good time. Just playing Uno with some other guys who like Counter Strike. Bunch of dudes playing in Uno. Chengdu, China, going down yeah, the slide. We saw this massive. Do- oh yeah, there was a slide. There was a, this place was like three stories high, and there was a slide on the roof, 
and you'd okay. go down the slide and you'd come down. It's and I think McDonald's. Alex went down at first and he scared the shit out of some woman who was sitting next to the slide when he came down. Because they're just it was sitting there. Be I like think her five year old kid and some fucking grown man. Oh, there's no children in there, man. It was a place for adults. It was a bar at like 12 okay. o'clock at night. Okay, sure. She was on a date or something. Like, woof, Alex comes flying down. Yeah, it was good fun. <laughs> yeah. It was great fun. All right. Yeah. That, that was China. That was China. Yeah. Cool. Now, the what? Counter Strike side of things. <laughs> <laughs> What's Jason been up to, though? You know, how's America? Oh, dude, America's cool. I've been, I've been adulting this, this whole time. I mean, with the time zone, it was kind of hard. So, like, I generally caught, like, you know, the first game for me started at like 1230 just after midnight. Uh, so I would like fall asleep watching the first game of the day and then I would wake up and catch like the last game of the day. Um, so like watching it was kind of hard, but I got to catch some of the liquid games on VOD and, and Astralis game and such. But um, yeah, I've, dude, it's like I've, I've been I've been full life focus and anticipation of this three week pro league stint. So like I've been in the yard doing a bunch of yard work, getting that, getting everything ready because spring's here. So we got to start mowing the lawn. So shit like that getting things ready for the kid to take off uh, just just general house duties and errand running uh it's been it's been all adult man i, I have nothing exciting to give you at the moment yeah okay. yeah i wish well, i, I no, wish I, I wish i That's had some exciting. cool stories yeah i know it, it feels good i get to i get some shit done sense of responsibility sense of you know uh accomplishing some positive fatherhood and, and you know husbandly duties but it's it's just been busy work mostly sounds great all right yeah. yeah well yeah. we're getting older that's what's happening so you know you gotta you know it's just I, had, some, I spent, I spent, I I spent two hours in the yard just picking sticks up out of the out of the grass that fell during the winter so that was that was one day i wish i had a yard must be nice jason yeah it's cool yeah. except when you have to pick up fucking sticks <laughs> i do have balls. a uh, i do have i do have a pond uh in my backyard at the moment i have a sump pump installed i have a low area in my yard and when all the snow melts and all the rain comes at the start of spring um it builds up and creates a pond which is why we had the sump pump because then that pushes all the water out to the to the side out to the street uh but it broke so i have a pond i've had um two lovely ducks living in said pond for a couple of weeks now <laughs> Um, as we can't get a repairman out to fix the sump pump until the water clears, which will take about a month. So, so what's next? You're going to the you know store buying some gabagool. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, I got it. That's a nice. It sounds like reference. an Adam Sandler it's, reference. It's, no, it's a it's a Sopranos reference. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry, man. He, I, he, first season, he was obsessed with some ducks that came to live in his in his pool. You need to watch. You that know, some show. people haven't seen Star Wars. Some people haven't seen Lord of the Rings. I haven't seen The Sopranos. It's okay. All three yeah, are great. Yeah. You need to watch all three. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've seen the first two. I've seen Lord of the Rings and, and I can't watch Lord of the Rings in one sitting though. Like it, even each movie, that shit fucking, it's like watching, it's like watching fucking paint dry. It's like watching uh, people upset, walk to a mountain. <clears throat> just upset a lot of people with that one. Um, sorry, everybody who likes Lord of the Rings. You know, that wasn't her meant to, to hurt your feelings. Um, where do we want to start, gentlemen? Just uh, like, where do we want to end? I think probably start to just try and do like sort of CS aspect yeah. like you know just thoughts on the t like the tournament the results i don't think it's gonna take us too long to go through it no no let's, probably uh, not let's start with uh let's start with one close to home for me let's start with liquid just because that'll be you know went out in the quarterfinals uh but we got i guess a more positive showing out of them than we would have liked probably not entirely where we want them to be at the end of the day but some positive signs Kadian had a good event. Uh, Yakinder was having a little bit more impact. Uh, the other guys yeah. continue to be consistent. It was it was good, not great. Yank, I know yours. What your angle is going to be. So let me let me throw this at Jason mm -hmm. because I wanna I, I wanna try and lure him in, and then you can fucking slam him. Do you think that they've uh, Jason, as a former Team Liquid employee, do you think they've done enough to justify uh, you know another another six months or justify this roster up until the 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 next major cycle? Uh, no, not necessarily, but I think it, I mean, it all depends on like market conditions. I think if you're liquid, you, you might still be, you know, seeing who's available and entertaining, um, some possibilities for some changes, but 
I think more than anything, I think pro league will kind of be the one where we get to see if this can actually be consistent. If they have like another like crap performance, shocking losses, shocking upsets, looking lost, looking disconnected, um, then I think you you probably try and make a change right out of pro league. Damn. Okay. There you go. We Yanko doesn't need to slam you at any uh, <laughs> any stretch of the imagination. Then I think like. The fact there's two teams who came into this, in my opinion, in the black box, right? Because they were able to be in the lab while everybody else was doing the major and stuff. And that was Astralis and Liquid. So the fact that they both had decent showings, that isn't a huge surprise because of the, the quality of player. I think the biggest issue with Liquid was they looked dysfunctional online. They didn't qualify for the major. They came in here and they showed a better face against good names, right? So that's what puts value on this type of result is a win over Heroic in a best of one and then a win over G2 uh, in a three-mapper. But realistically, the they didn't really put up much of a fight against Maus, who continued to wet the bed in the final. And in the playoff, who did they play in the playoff? Phase. Phase, oh, the eventual winners. Yeah. And that went three played maps. Them, played them pretty close. Yeah, so there's posit- look, there's positive signs. I- I'll agree with that sentiment, but uh, I don't know. I just think when you have these type of changes and you're an org the size of Liquid, it- I know things take time, but it's got to. You're right. It has to. It has to keep up. It can't be I, a-, I think, a step backwards at Pro League. I think it's it's easy. Like I didn't overreact when they bombed out when they when they looked kind of gross at the at the RMR and in some of those online qualifiers. And just as much, I don't want to like overreact on one good performance and be like, yeah, all right, they're enough. back. So it's kind. Of, that's why I'm sort of like. You know, I think the biggest thing is going to show that the improvements they made at Chengdu are going to follow up at Pro League and they'll continue to look consistent. They'll continue to look like they're headed in the right direction. Um, But I mean, you know, with the major cycle, I mean, I guess technically already started, but you're still early in it. Like if if, if Pro League looks horrible, uh, you know, I think you have to really be a little bit more aggressive if you can to find, you know, some way to fix things going into the major. Because if you're liquid, you're, you're right. Like an organization of that size with the money they spend and, and, and the resources they pump into this team you have to be making the major like and you've already missed one this year missing both uh, would would just be would hurt so much so um i think that's where they have to like kind of look at things and analyze and say making making shanghai is our number one priority and we're going to do everything we can to get there um and they're going to have to have some real honest conversations if, if pro league is is ugly even even if it's even if it's like another good but not great i think they have to have like kind of like a really big internal conversation about how they can how they can change things and if they need to change things um and that'll be interesting to see i i don't know i don't think they're making any changes before the player break like even if they suck it probably is like what you only have dallas left and they didn't make the spring finals right so have that one more event i think you'll just play the event with the lineup and then oh yeah you'd, you'd play dallas but like you start looking after pro league right like you start yeah. opening yourself up to the market I think for me, what I learned about Liquid um, from this event is that, you know, Twist and Aff are solid. Like, they can execute their role on a high level. Um, KDN is like, you know, what you know what you're getting from him. His, his ceiling is not going to go much more up. Sometimes he's going to have, like, not great games individually where he's going to miss a couple of shots. But, I mean, that's what you knew getting him so i don't think that's going to improve a lot and then it's down to really skulls and yakinda right where we saw a little bit more from skulls in this tournament and i think it's fair to give him until the end of the season to see if he can find a little bit more output a little bit more fragging right and for yakinda though i don't i don't think he can keep his spot on this team you know i think he's had a couple of moves and a couple of plays where he's just like forcing the issue for no reason um if you look at the mouse game on inferno towards the very end like it was a really close game and he's just like pushing through smokes and trying to make like some surprise plays uh on banana on b that's like unnecessary you know mouse was struggling to find rounds and um to to win rounds on the t side and you're just giving them those advantages and then we go to mirage man i was like I was sick from what I was seeing. So <laughs> his against first face? two kills come no against Mouse. His first two kills Mouse. come in like the first or the second gun round on CT side where he just walks through a smoke on cat like and, and catches two players on mid, um holding nades or something, not 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 looking at him. And that those are his two kills. 
And then he doesn't get another kill, I think, until maybe the last or the second to last round. And every single round on CT side, he's around ladder room. Like, he's always, like, aggressive, looking for fights, and he's always dying. He's always getting killed. He's always getting punished. And there's no, like, adjustment. There's no, like, hey, maybe I won't fucking go cat, you know? Maybe I'll play more towards the site. And un unless what we want to do is, as a team, we want to send everyone there and we're fighting, and then even if I die, someone will get traded. Like, he's just, he was just a complete liability. He was a free frag that almost whole game. And you can't have that, you know, especially when you have other players playing well and, you know, you don't need to go for those hero plays. And I don't know why would, you know, your team doesn't want you to go for those plays either, probably. So it didn't look good for me just from that side of things. I don't know if, if you know, they'll have talks with him about it and some adjustments will be made coming into Pro League, but I... Still have some faith in Skulls that it can work out. I don't really have faith in Inya Kinder working out with this lineup. You know, I don't know if it has to be for him going back uh, into the CIS scene, right? And and doing that, or what does it have to be? But I don't think it's working out. It seems like he's like yeah. having like a crisis of confidence in himself. Like I don't see that same kind of swagger that I used to see at a at a Yekinder when he's playing these days. I think, I don't know, I look at Liquid as a whole, right? And when you see all the names get put together on paper, you have like a level of excitement about it because of the pedigree of a lot of the players. But what you do in that moment when you see it come together is you're romanticizing the possibility and you're looking to what the highest potential would be because you know the skill ceiling or uh, what you've seen out of these guys in the past of what they can deliver, right? So you, you, you think of it from, well, at least I did. I thought of it from that angle. So I, I'm pretty hyped to see the roster come together. But the truth of the matter is you're marrying so many different types of philosophies of Counter-Strike together that if you had a year, which we don't, right? Because we're in a we're, we're talking in the, the scheme of a team like Liquid. If you had a year that you could just blag and it doesn't really matter, you know, we go into all these events, we use the partner status of these, we get in as much as we can. And what we're going to do is with the core of the team, build out a system of how we want to have the vision of the game as a collective. They're not able to do that in a short period of time. And you also have strong personalities of how they view the game. So I, I think that's quite tough because you have somebody like Twists who was there in Liquid once upon a time, but that is ancient history now. So he's basing off a phase and the responsibilities that Carrigan would have imparted on, a, on his players. And that's his most recent bar. But you had Heroic, who was a team who was competing at a high level uh, and, and Kadian doing it in a completely different way with an orping in-game leader. And then you have Naf and Yakinda, the remnants of the Liquid that wasn't successful previously anyway. So their identity, like you said, Jason, is lost. I don't imagine Naf is going to say a lot. He's just going to do his job. He's the type yeah. of player I see just going in and just getting it done. Done. Whereas your kinder to facilitate him and get the most out of him, well, we haven't seen that in a long time. So probably the idea of the crisis that you're talking about probably does exist within his head and they're wondering as a team how they can even get the most out of him. And then Skulls comes in, his first international team as a Brazilian player who's now been put on, in, on the pedestal of a team like Liquid from Paint. So he's a fish out of water, just trying to deliver and probably needs the system to make sense so that he can make the correct choices because he's not as experienced to have all of that downloaded data in his head. So then you try and marry all those things together and it's going to take an awfully long time in my mind because you don't even have a base. Like what is the base that you start with? Like whose base do you pick as the, the best? Like yeah. the two remnants of the team, their shit was fucked up. Like they were chopping and changing in-game leaders. Like there was, but so uh, look, my my biggest qualm is if it clicked initially and they were able to work it out with the large personalities that they had and everybody was going to like work extra hard and get on the page straight away, I think we would have seen, or I think now we will see those results because that I think the victories they had in Chengdu are confidence building victories in the sense of if it is going to work, it should now work off the back of them getting a couple of wins against other decent names as opposed to online losses or losses at the RMR to teams that they should probably beat because that nails your confidence as a good Counter-Strike player losing to teams who you think you should beat, right? You just think, oh, we fucking suck. But now you did it. You played on a stage. It's all good. You you know, you had some crazy Cadian clutches. You, you had Skulls anchoring down in moments, getting the really impactful multi-kills. So the, the sparks are there, but if it's going to work and like, if Liquid don't make Shanghai after not making the uh major uh, the copenhagen major that's that's a fucking calamity they fall into that status of like astralis in recent times right and these are these are huge orgs in counter-strike that unfortunately it's just not good enough but i think 
what's got them here is the wishy-washy nature over the last couple of years of not having like a solid coach to build that foundation because every time they have one of these rosters, they're starting again. Yeah. Like I, I got to talk to Blade last night. Even though they brought this international roster together uh, for Na'Vi, um, they were, you know, starting again because they're trying to get all of these pieces in the place, but it's Blade's way of seeing the game of how they all get put into, right? Like, and, and that's that's strong. Whereas Zeus coming back, it's always this fucking balancing act, man. I, I, I want them to be good because I like a lot of players within that team. But um, yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to... So yeah. this classic wait gonna, and see we're gonna, situation. We're going to wait and see for sure. But I mean, that is the reason why guys like Zeus and Kadian are brought in is, is to is to kind of build that foundation. So um, we'll see if it, again, it comes down to, does it does it look like that foundation is actually getting put into place by Pro League? I guess that's kind of like the sentiment of, of saying, like, is, is what the positive growth going to be consistent from event to event? Mm. Uh, yeah, I, well, think, it's a, I think it's a weird place too with Yakinder on the hot seat being like such a playmaker and space creator. Like I think this team like almost needs someone like that. I think Yakinder is just not efficient enough in that in that role at the moment. But you know, if you take Yakinder out of it, who becomes the space creator? Who becomes like the initial contact guy on this team? Well, I think Twist can like if if I'm honest with all ping in-game leader teams, there's like two ways to do it in my mind. There's the way that KDM was doing it with Heroic, which requires your riflers to all have a lot of autonomy and a lot of input into the rounds, like or making plays or taking space, um, based off of the chaos that is created on the map because the Orpa is not going to necessarily be involved in a lot of doing that on the T side. Or you do it in the alternative version, which is the Jame way, which is very safe. Um, you know, wants to run down the clock, subvert uh any issues of dealing with you know smokes and randomness in those scenarios and then just going for like a finish late within rounds uh, it can't i don't think it can be in between like i, I think if you're going to have an orping in-game leader you need to pick like one of those two and if anything this team should be closer to being able to do more of um the cadian style because you have cadian as the in-game leader but that's going to require communication to be flowing right it has yeah. to be silky fucking smooth and you also need to build the decision tree the positive thing that you have as a danish team is most people were brought up on a similar understanding Theory of counter-strike of yeah. yeah whereas this this one it's it's all different so to get like j even just basic like protocols of responses that you would have are going to be different across a lot of these heads. And, and that's where a lot of theory needs to come into play. And to be fair, it's not like they haven't had time because they didn't qualify for the major. So they should have had a lot of time to be able to talk about these things. But Yanka, you said that you don't think there's going to be like a roster change for Liquid before the player break just based on the the scenario we find ourselves in. But we just saw the other day this Virtus Pro situation with Electronic jumping shit from Cloud9 and going to VP to replace Mia. Uh, and and we also just saw Furia make a change with Art and Gary going out. Uh, obviously, we're going to get stuck into that into great detail. But like, don't... Uh, I thought post-major, obviously not directly because of the tournaments, we're in the period right now where if you're going to make changes, it would make sense to do it as soon as possible possible which doesn't mean just like click your fingers and it's done but when there is a chance to make a change in the climate to look to do it actively especially if you're not considered like a, a trophy containing team at the moment which is what phase navi spirit maybe uh definitely vitality maybe g2 mm, i want to say maybe mouse but that's a whole nother conversation as well i feel if you're not any of those like top six teams then you you should be considering it if it is a possibility or if it's a better, if it's an upgrade or along those lines. I mean, sure, you, you can. And some of those situations are different, but I think it's just for them is, as, as it was like, they weren't supposed to be in Chengdu at all. And they came and they came to the playoffs and lost to the eventual winners of the tournament in a closed series, right? So I think it's Are we like, talking about Liquid? Yes. So I think it's okay. like, Let's give it a little bit more to see maybe there's, you know, because the results haven't been great, but they haven't had a lot of opportunities. You know, they didn't even play in Katowice. RMR was what it was, and some of the other stuff was online, blah, blah, blah. So I think in their particular situation, unless something opens up where you're like, like it was the VP thing, like a player that fits perfectly and you wouldn't think was going to be available is available, and then you just pull the trigger is... That's the only way you make it right now because, you know, you've invested a lot. You've been talking about the process. You had all these, you know, you've been working a lot on team building and building the culture and everything. And then you don't want to quit all that 
just three tournaments in or three months later, right? And also, we don't know what's going on inside the team or what's going on with Yakindar. You know, Twist was talking about the RMR. He was going through some personal stuff, right? Like, is he going through some bad phase, bad patch, and, you know, Liquid wants to stick it through with him or, or, or something like that? I don't know, right? Like, I think... I don't think it's out of the question for teams, but it just depends on the the situation and the timing has to be right. Yeah, I, 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 the thing is, I don't imagine... It, the players that all these teams want, like this is what Blade said last night when I was chatting to him. He said like when they were building their international Na'Vi, they couldn't just have whatever player they want, right? Because of contracts. So you're not just building your dream team. You might have all the money in the world, yeah. but even just to get people out of these contracts or whatever, it's, it's, it's not going to work that way. So... I guess it needs to be the type of player you're looking for, um, and that that is that's where the inner workings of a team. Like we can definitely look and say, "Oh, it looks like they're missing a player to fill out this type of role." But then you know you have the personality side of things. What is there any is there any not beef, but any residual stuff from these guys in the past, or do they not think this personality fits, or they're looking for someone a little bit higher energy? There's so much that goes into all of these things that it is difficult to kind of forecast what what should or shouldn't happen i was glad with the electronic news that it didn't leak like it was kind of nice just to have yeah, something dude, completely yeah. random happen yeah that was crazy i woke up at 4 30 in the morning to the baby crying and just looked at my phone and it was like electronic has joined virtus pro and i was like what the fuck like am i am i imagining things that was actually like a, a sweet surprise uh, roster change that we don't get very often sorry i muted my mic <laughs> Um, I, I did, did you know on these microphones, these shores that you can hit, there's a button. I yeah, didn't realize the touch button I didn't know that. Yeah. You can also I, change the gain by using the little slidey bar. I just learned something today. My man. Fuck. Yeah. That's um, kind of nice. Yeah. Well, I mean, since we're there, let's just, let's just talk about the, the electronic to VP, uh, move. Um, that's pretty fucking sick. I think it's, uh, I mean, there's no reason why it feels like it feels logical and it feels like it should make sense. And it feels like he should be able to slot in pretty, pretty damn well and make VP instantly better. I, I just wonder, is he brought in because he adds a different spice or is he meant to come in and now be like the lead shaman of the religion of Jame and just fall into line and spread the word? Um, because I think, VP, we always talk about them as a team that's threatening, right? Like that's that's not up for debate. And their type of style um, is one that can, you know, be difficult for some teams to to play against. But I, I think when they were their, their best and they won the majors outsiders, you always talk about this, Yanko, it was like the diversity in their play. It was the fact that they were able to have, you know, more quicker based moves or uh, it wasn't just like the slow play. And I'm not saying that's all they do now, but I just wonder if Electronic is brought in to give them more range in, in or if he's just meant to now slip into what Mir was doing, which, you know, I could, I think Mir was given pretty good positions and wasn't having necessarily the best output. Um, so that, that for me is going to be the most curious scenario because like i don't know I, I i know that electronic comes from navi where once upon a time they used to do a bit of saving as well but this is this is like saving on steroids in certain scenarios so I, i'm just curious to see how it merges i think it's definitely an upgrade on Mir. like don't get me wrong yeah, yeah i think that sure. they have a lot of strong you think about the rifling core of that team flit fame and electronic you're like fuck some people's heads are getting blown off and norbert was in great form in chengdu so uh, it, it it's strong i just have questions about what the motivation is is it just me wasn't good enough electronic makes sense or is it we need you know we need a new flavor we need some szechuan spice in our life i i i, I it's hard to see though as this is a negative move by any means i think, I think it's yeah yeah i think it's just a, it's just a massive upgrade like mere a couple of times got the opportunity didn't really deliver on a really good team and i thought he was going to go regardless i i just my idea was because when he he came in, he took Fame's roles, and then I thought maybe you could give Fame back his roles and then just get a player, you know, to exchange that. But I mean, this obviously works really well. I mean, you have a rifling core of electronic Fame and Flit, like that's sick in terms of firepower. And Norbert, as you said, like 
he's been stepping up and I talked to a couple of players and they they're saying like he's doing a really good job of you know taking space on maps and just being annoying right and and uh having good timings like understanding when to play when to not play and and things like that so yeah also it's the 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 role that Mir had is important right like you 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 can have impact in that role like you can deliver rounds for your team and he hasn't really been doing that and i think from all of that it it makes a lot of sense um for vp and yeah the only question is can electronic just shut up and play and do what he's told right in a sense so because james has a very specific way that he wants the game to play the game and the game to be played by his players right and you need to buy into that otherwise your ass might be gone mid tournament <laughs> like <laughs> like we saw right an electronic obviously being a veteran player and a accomplished player and all of that stuff he might disagree with some of these things and i think also i don't think james is like a dictator or anything like that that if he that he will not be willing to adjust especially if you know electronic comes with him with some ideas that he thinks are good you know like let's not forget this guy also played on very good teams and and won championships and whatnot so yeah i think as long as that works out in a way where you know electronic isn't playing something that he doesn't believe in and isn't doing things is doing things that feel unnatural to him i think it's an incredible move and propels vp into that contender status you know, any anytime you bring someone like Electronic into the team with that experience and, and the, the kind of the pedigree that he's got, the resume that he's got, and the player that he is, I think it's it's naturally going to, um, you know, create new aspects to your game. So I think I think your point, Yanko, about him like really buying into how James wants the game to be played is is super critical. But I think there's also I don't know if I want to call it like give from James. But, you know, Electronic is a guy like you have to unleash him a little bit because he's got smart game sense. He knows when to pick his fights. He knows when to pick his battles. And he's one of those guys like uh, who, who when he's in certain positions, like I've always thought that he's had such a varied playbook in terms of some rounds playing it passively. Like if you think a Mirage is an easy one, just sometimes playing it super passively, sometimes looking for a timing to take a peek into the bomb site, sometimes just harassing down towards connector and jungle from from an angle. Like he's got such a such a, you know, varied way of playing some positions on maps that you have to let him flex those a little bit because that's where a lot of his impact comes in. And then if you if you look down the line at this strong rifling core they they all of a sudden have, it's like you know, electronics impact is going to open up more opportunities for everyone. So I I actually in in like the perfect world where where this all kind of like, you know, if we just say this is going to work out perfectly, like I think electronic is someone who can just he's going to be another rifler that can just find one kill and as soon as VP gets an advantage, that's when they're play style i feel like really kicks into gear like when they when they have like the defense shifting and scrambling to find new positions and find out what's coming and like the the addition of electronic with his intelligent gameplay and incredible skills it's just one more weapon that's going to open the map up for the rest of vp's talent so i'm i'm super excited about what this vp team is going to look like uh, i'm going to be honest like so just we get to see vp first game of pro league literally like on the Ooh, a stream that's the first hot. game uh so we, we get to see them pretty soon actually because that's going to be tuesday and today's thursday so it's going to be right around the corner but uh as much as as much as i I'm, I'm obviously interested to see how this team unfolds and i agree with yanko i think that they should put them in um contender status conversation uh, if not immediate like if not immediately but in a pretty pretty short span of time like i think they have a good runway now going into the next major to build up everything that they require um but it really m- makes me pose the question of, and Yanko, I think you were quoted by like draft five or some shit the other day when you said this <laughs> on the desk, but um, something being dysfunctional, uh, I'm probably paraphrasing here, uh, within Cloud9. It just leaves me with so many questions about what the fuck is going wrong at Cloud9, like for Electronic to just be like, all right, well, I'm fucking out of this. It's all happened. It's, all, it's, it's been falling apart at the seams pretty much ever since it was announced. And in the last what year they were probably at least in my books one of the most exciting rosters ever put together when shiro was was part of the team right and it was like this is gonna be fucking sick like they got perfecto and electronic and shiro's here and axel's fucking nuts and they have a hobbit the older head and it's like this is gonna be awesome like this team is so strong like look at look at all of the rifling power they have look at the pedigree of all the players shiro on the awp it's gonna be great and it was shit 
Like it, it <laughs> like it, it wasn't That's good, right? Like Shiro benched bro. himself. <laughs> Shiro benched himself, and now Electronics left, and it's like, ah, oh, like ah, oh, yeah, oh, we were poor. What, not poor Cloud Nine, but what the fuck's going on at Cloud Nine, man? Bro, the worst thing is it's like the second time it happens, sort of. I mean, first you had the whole Colossus project, and now this, right? Which is very unfortunate. I don't think it's a bad run org or anything like that. And you know, obviously a huge name that we like to have in in CS and a storied name in CS, but shit just goes south for them, man. And I think it also tells you the importance of making the correct like fit culturally in a way right uh relationship wise between the players um energy levels i don't know because it's such an extreme decision for a player like shiro to bench himself and then he goes on to spirit and immediately wins katowice and they're one of the you know best teams in the world and and whatnot like you only do that if you have no faith in 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 the team right or you're having such a miserable time on that team right where you don't feel like you're improving you're not having fun playing like all of the above maybe and 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 so on and yeah now for cloud nine obviously you know they can just get an upper and change some stuff around and play but it's like does this roster need even more changes like what's the what what's rotten in cloud nine because something is definitely rotten and and how do you fix it does it go beyond I, not having an op oh yeah well, yeah absolutely. obviously obviously and, yeah. I don't. I don't think. But it's as simple as. Oh yeah. I think that's even well, what I said. Like at, at that 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 was being referenced as like you know it's not just like remove some player and add an opera. That's not fixing it. Like there's something deeper. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of. Cr- I mean, I, I agree. There's been something dysfunctional, but it's still kind of like in, in that in that light. It is sort of impressive that they they made the quarterfinals. <laughs> you know. Oh yeah, for sure, for like, sure. And the fact that this this look, the fact. The fact is, this was must have been known before the event, and the reason I say that is, how else is was was Electronic on VP's roster for Pro League without yeah, it already true. being known? I'm pretty sure the deadline would have already been done at that point, or if when not the deadline. The deadline? I'm, I'm look, I I I should have looked. I had access to um some some Pro League documents because I've been working out like. You know, you guys know I've been working out like run a show and that type of stuff over the last couple of months. And I had access to some documents a couple of weeks ago and all the rosters were in there, but I didn't bother like sitting there looking at those details yet because I'm looking more broad. But I'm pretty sure his name would have been in there then. So it's it's definitely been uh in the in the plans for a little while. So it's been it's been it's been known. So uh, you wonder how yeah, I don't know. I I, I, I can't say for certain. I'm just saying I'm I'm pretty sure. Um, so like with with that change, and I guess if I step back and I look at Cloud Nine and, and and Yanko, you know, you're saying okay, maybe more changes have to be made. But if we if we look at the pieces we have left over, I think Boomish is more than serviceable as the in-game leader. Like I think that's fine. Like because he likes to take space, he does like a lot of the dirty in-game leader jobs. That's all good. But now you have Axile, Perfecto, and Hobbit, and for me, I think that. Hobbit and Perfecto can do most of what you ask them to do, but I, I would like to I would like to keep those guys as the more like anchorish, supportive elements of the team. One has to be more active on the T side to be like more active lurks or taking space or whatever. Um, but I, like Axel as well is playing some of these like side anchor positions. I, I feel like Axel might have to become like yeah, a surely, more confident, sh- cocky player. Surely you don't fuck with Axel's game at the moment, right? When you've just got him back to looking like he can frag again. Yeah, but that's that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> you know, like who's 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 the star of the team then? It's got yeah, it's got to be Axel in terms of rifling. You feel it's- so unless they just completely change their approach to the game and try and play differently overall. Like if they they need somebody to fill that void, and you want to bring in an orper because you'd be missing that anyway, so go get Spirit sloppy seconds and see if you can rescue Art Frost or some shit, or get Deco on the phone or something like that. Just get one of these kids who hopefully can can bring you these spurts. Deco would fit um, right in Cloud 9s culture, maybe. <laughs> well, now that Electronics gone, right? Like I'm trying to think because I'm not saying here's, Electronic was was toxic, but he's definitely a guy who speaks his mind. Here's here's an angle to look at this with, like a, a fresh one, because we've done the Counter Strike. Obviously, is 
the the overdrive tweet saying the electronic transfer is 1.5 million. Now I'm just out of the gate. I'm going to say that I take it with a grain of salt. I haven't heard if you any say numbers. What I think you're going to say. 1.5 million is a. I don't. What do you mean? I don't even know what I'm going to say next. I'm just. I'm going to disconnect, Jason. Don't say it. He's not for sale. <laughs> no, 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 no. I wasn't. I wasn't going there. I'm just saying one is. Jason, they've told you once. They've told you twice. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you a fucking third time. Monacy's not for sale. He's Jason. not for fucking sale. But sorry, sorry. I just want to, you know, was, to have a little bit there. A was elect- is electronic worth one point five million? If we just take that number at face value, and B, all of a sudden, that's a good amount of cash that Cloud Knight has to spend on an opera, whether it's Monacy or not. <laughs> but like uh-huh. you know, because for me, that like a one point user million, has disconnected from the channel. <laughs> one point five million is a fucking crazy number. Is a crazy number. Yeah, look, well that that's the thing though. If uh, other than Monacy, right? What Orpa would you be getting anyway? Like does anybody else leap off the like there's a lot of conversation around Dexter? No. No, 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 no. Yeah, he's been that's away my for thoughts. a while. I don't know what the issue is. Maybe asking for too much money. I I, 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 don't know I think I think playstyle wise, I don't think people want to mess with it. I think he's one of those operas that just like wants to like fucking almost almost half death match in a way. And Hold I, up a I, second. I could be way out base. Wait a second though. Sure. Okay. Considering that like Perfecto and Hobbit and stuff, they don't need to be these aggressive players. What if they actually gave Dexter his dream and they just <laughs> built a team of passive riflers who were just all four of them, all their job to do was to set Dexter up every round. What if we've cracked it? No, get out. What if we've just solved it? I hate that. I hate oh, it. me too. There's but. no way they would do it. <laughs> you know, I don't think they believe I mean, that. Dude, because, I mean, that that's feasible to work once in a while, right? But, like, the question is, like, you have to you have to be able to do other things on the map too, obviously. Like, you know, you can't just have that be, like, your primary go-to. And that'd be putting a lot of, a lot of, a lot of responsibility that Dexter is going to deliver out of the gate. But I guess, and, and, yeah, that'd be, that'd be really rough to pull off. Really rough to pull off. I, I don't know what they what they can do really because I think the the, the players that they have are so experienced and are, are good players, but they're just lacking like now it feels like they're lacking punch. Yeah, like they just they just lack anyone who can swing for the fences. Weird because again it feels like they got some of that punch back at the major with Exile actually performing for the first time in like a year. You know, like they, they just got that punch back and now it's just deflated. I, I don't know. Weird. I, you know, now that you say, now that you mentioned that chat about they had to have known this roster change was coming, it, it makes like the loser interview from Boomich at the quarterfinals, like make a lot more sense. Cause I remember watching that and he was very kind of like nonchalant, like, oh yeah, we, we made it. And, you know, we were just kind of happy to get here and yeah, win would have been great, but no big deal. And like, I guess in that, in the context of potentially if they knew electronic was leaving the team, it makes a little bit more sense. Cause I remember sitting there and being like, I wish he was pissed. Like I, I, right. Like I wish, I wish there was like a little bit of anger, sadness, something that they didn't make it to the semifinals, but he was just like very much accepted and been like, yeah, we reached our goal of the playoffs and, and that's it. And we'll see you later. And now we don't see them in pro league because they don't have a fifth. Which so. makes sense. I actually like that they pulled out instead of just trying to hustle like some random fucking stand in. The bit that makes me the most sad about that is that Spirit declined the invite, so we gave it to Saw. Like no disrespect to Saw, you know Spirit boys. Um, I'm sure we have a couple of Portuguese listeners. That's not meant to be degrading of your your team, but Spirit are you know one of the most exciting rosters at the moment, and they. I imagine maybe it was something visa related. I I don't know. I actually have no idea. I was just wildly speculating. But the fact that they said no, it it's like for fuck's sake. Like that could have we we almost got a way to salvage. Um, you know, not having spirit there, we almost got a freebie. We almost got a Virtus Pro 2016 type invite situation going on, and um, they they declined it. So that that kind of sucks. Um, yeah, because it would have been why. cool to have them there. Um, okay, should we? I don't go know back why to... did they turn it down? I don't know. Yeah, we don't yeah. have any. Like, I, I don't. I, I guess we could ask like somebody from it, either. They have. We got a production call in fifty six minutes. We could ask there. We should. Yeah. Um. Do we want to go back to Chengdu and talk about Astralis? 
Hold up, yep, second, because Jason. Chad, what about Fury? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get to them. Let's spend. Let's <laughs> I want to make sure you have enough time, Yanka. That's all. We'll have enough time. We can wrap up Chang doing like ten minutes. I know, like, because you uh-huh. were really hot on Astralis, and they actually did yeah. pretty good. So you know, I'm giving you an opportunity to gloat a little bit, Chad, while I go and take a piss. Oh, okay. Um, I, <laughs> I don't know. Okay, well, Yanko is going to go take a piss. I, I was just happy to, to see um, Device smashing a monitor. That was really the highlight of Astralis. It's never happening again, me. so I hope you really enjoyed it. But think about the fun content that we can make around device smashing monitors or not smashing monitors, right? Like, there's, I'm sure, there, sure there's some good stuff that we can do there. You know, we can oh, take we can do a, a skit. We can put them into one of those, like, you know, those like stress rooms, so you could just go break shit. Yeah, yeah. But we just put a bunch of monitors in it <laughs> and just have them okay. go crazy. Okay, it just gets it out of your system. Yeah. We just put some 360 or, of those or he just can't do monitors. it, or he just can't do it, and it just makes him more stressed. You could go. The oh. Other way. He's showing restraint. It like it like drives him insane because he's no longer he's he's self you know pulled away from punching monitors. Yeah. Okay. All right. I don't mind that. I don't mind that. Now I um I was happy to see them playing well. They definitely were. I think in the interview that Stown gave to HRTV, I think there was like he said they were hungry, which was uh, definitely Back. visible in in the in the way that they were. We we're just talking about device smashing monitors. All right. Um, in the way that they were they were playing, like the, the game against Steel Helmet was a bit of a meme, right? Like Steel Helmet obviously brought in last minute, and those guys were never gonna uh, pull off a lot in in that series. Uh, a two zero against Phase in group stage, so I'm gonna chalk a lot of that up to the fact that Phase uh, post major hangover. I'm not taking away from Astralis looking more complete. I think that definitely were, and you could see the comfort from Yabby and Stown immediately. They were back to making their traditional types of plays, taking the space they would on the CT or the T sides. Um, Device was great, like clutching and everything like that. Device always throwing util, like his his util, like which is common for an AWP while riflers are taking space, sure. But now he's got like double duty with the in-game leader side of things as well. I think the mo- most impressive victory... Um, at the time was Astralis over VP, but now I wonder how that plays in if VP knew that Mir was out and Electronic was in. Um, so does that detract from that result? I, I, I guess not really, because they were still trying to play to win. I, you, you're always trying to play to win as a competitor. You don't put a lot of, um, a lot of stock in the 2-0 win over phase? It's, it's hard to put stock in that though, isn't it? Like yeah, phase post major hangover and it's yeah. a group stage game. Exactly. Like, yeah. Like I think it's a good win for Astralis. Like if I'm on the Astralis side of the fence, I'm happy because the team was playing cohesive counter strike. I think when you look at the fact that they played them again in playoffs and they took a map uh, and dominantly took a map, I put more stock in that because it was a stage game. Uh, there were stakes for phase, regardless of them being tired. There's stakes, and that's that's the that's what you know gets you out of bed in the morning if you're a team like FaZe to play an elimination stage game. Um, I think it was very, very fucked up uh, to have this drop again um, happening to Device in that round under pressure when he was getting pushed back arch side, which obviously led to the monitor punch. Um, I'm not sure, you know, that was the, what, it was a CT gun round, right? If, if I remember rightly when that happened and they, yeah. they were on the CT side second. So it actually could have been like a pivotal round as part of the comeback, but I'm not going to do these ifs and buts and maybes. Um, we've done that to death recently. So I think that's very unfortunate and, you know, a same situation, obviously not the same gravitas as the major, but that just sucks in general for Astralis. Um, of what could have been but overall positive sign steps in the right direction and i think if that's the first look at what this australis roster could offer the future is is very bright because it 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 makes sense like the way that the team can look and can function makes sense to me so yeah happy to see it happy to see it working yeah i think um you could tell, like the, the I, I use I use this a couple of times at the turn. They were the horniest team at the tournament, you know, <laughs> because they're just so eager to show, like I guess in their eyes, like how much blame was the problem and how he was holding them back, and how now with a different approach to the game and Stone being back in his roles and all of that stuff, and he had like in general a really good, I mean, great tournament, really good group stage, not so much in the in the playoff game. Right, like what they're capable of, and I think we saw that. I think we saw solid stuff from them. I think it was a really good first showing, but that's all it is—a first showing, right? And they might be in that honeymoon phase, so we'll see how it go, how it goes 
you know, the device monitor punch is exactly the sort of a thing when we were discussing it, when I was saying like, you know, he's a bit of an emotional guy, right? Like you need to be able to keep that in check when you're an in-game leader, right? Because there's so much you need to think about and you have a lot of responsibilities and we already saw him sort of tweet or, or say or post something about like no more punching monitors like Zen mode activated, right? Probably having a, you know, someone having a chat with him and just him understanding that, you know, no matter how frustrating and how shitty a thing happens to you, like you need to be able to just move past it, right? And, and keep going um, because your team needs you. Yeah, but here's how you fix it, Yanko. You just wake up, you do some yoga, you go do leg day, you masturbate, and then you go play Counter Strike. If you've still got energy left after doing those three things, mate, I I don't know how you punch your monitors. Like, sh- surely you're exhausted at that point, aren't you? Like, yeah, I yeah. guess no, so. No. I guess you should ask James. He would know more about that. That's true. Him. And James, after he had one of the most devastating disconnects of all time, was just like, yeah, you know. They owned us on Anubis. It's all good. These things happen. I probably would have probably would have fucking lost his shit if he didn't masturbate right before the game. Exactly, yeah. mate. Imagine having like having just you're expending your seed all the time. Like, <laughs> what's what's? Hey, you wonder how many times a day James up to. We might have to ask him. Well, that's it's how you get crazy. Into, that's how you get into Zen mode. Yeah, yeah, crazy numbers. He must be posting. You know, no wonder he has no issues like saving or with the clock running down. He's like, yeah, it's all good. Eternally patient. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's always good. he's always what got his endorphins matter. going. Doesn't oh, fucking matter. Sorry to uh, anyone out there who has issues with masturbation talk. Um, if we have offended you here today, we will be talking about masturbation more in the future. <laughs> yeah, it and will I think come up again. A last couple of notes on on Chengdu um, FlyQuest. Some good wins, close to making the playoffs against VP. I guess that's a good initial sign. We'll see how they do after you know they're coming to Europe for a boot camp. Then there's Pro League and all of that stuff. So we'll see how all that goes for them. Heroic couldn't make the playoffs yet again. They seem to be stagnating a little bit after. They what just lost like yesterday a, on online qualifier too. Yeah, they did, and to, it looked promising. So we'll see did at the start if of the they year. decide yeah. to make some changes too, or what's the what's going on in that camp. And then just lastly, <gasps> well, nerds to liquid. Imagine. Oh Jesus! I thought you were reading a headline. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, <laughs> no, but. There's Think no way. About I that. thought he was going to be like. It, it would be sweet. <gasps> OG promote Lambert to head coach. What? It would be sweet, but there is no way. Why not? Dude, I don't think Nerds ain't leaving that team with Saul there. He's not. He's not doing that. Heroic definitely aren't letting him go. Okay, oh, Jason, why are you ruining all the fun, man? I mean, we can look. We can still have a good time. We can still speculate if you want to go into hypothetical I think hypothetical if we pulled mode apart, just... right? Okay. Like if we started pulling apart pieces of Heroic, we could help a lot of teams. For example, you ready for this? I'm ready for this. I take Shush and I transplant him to G2 for Nexa. Upgrade. Okay. I like that. Giga. Uh, like, bang. Would be Everyone's upgrade, like, whoa. Yeah. Fucking hell, Chad. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. Tessus? Hmm. Let me percolate on Tessos a little bit. I might have to think about that that one. Kixon, Kixon, Kixon. Kixon can go a couple places. Where would we send Kixon? Where could Kixon go? Well. God, you, you <laughs> really, you're really building this on the fly. You had Nerts, you had Shush, and the other three. That's all I had. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but really- I was like, I'm sure, I'm sure Saw can go somewhere as well. Like we, can, we can help Saw out. Saw can definitely go somewhere. Like We could, we could work with this. I mean, look, low-key, this is going to sound bad, but I, I'm also I'm, and, and on some level, I'm actually a little bit happy that Heroic has kind of been getting beaten up and hit because when this team came together, I remember just being like, I don't see a world in which this works. And then they got out to like a decent start, had some good games at Katowice, had some good runs at events, had some good upset victories. And it was like, oh, okay, maybe there, there's just something here that I don't that I didn't see. And now it's like back down, back down to reality. I feel like they're I like feel- people who didn't play Counter Strike in high school. They peaked already. Yeah, they're, 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 they've hit <laughs> they've hit the ceiling. They, they've they've been to the top of the mountain that they can get to. And, and now it's now it's only rolling down the avalanche. It's over for him, Yanko. It's yeah. over. Do you, do you think they can recover? I, th- I don't think they can. I think they're done. Like with this roster, I think that we've probably seen no the highest because of I don't know what caused the collapse, you know? Like, okay, Nerds play like shit at the Major. He said it himself. But, you know, Chengdu came. I guess they played G2. Um, but they lost in the best of one to Astralis, right? That was... I think Nikodos is a better rifle than he is Orpa. Yeah, yeah that, that's, like that's an too. issue. 
that's a massive issue. No, they lost to Liquid, not Astralis. So, yeah. and then went all the way through the lower bracket to play G two, lost to G two again. So yeah, I don't know. I think for G two for this tournament, I think they just need to, like, they have a. I don't know if it's an identity crisis or whatever, but you can't. It's a fucking this. It's fucking criminal that with players like Monesi and Hunter and Sean Nico, Monashi. your perma ban is Mirage. Like you have to be able to figure it out. Like sure, you had some bad maps, bad losses on Mirage early on with this roster, but sometimes that shit just you know you can't just like give up on it. You need to be able to figure it out because because of that you're in a situation where like you know the best map that you can play against mouse as a decider is overpass and i don't think you want to be in that situation as g2 right like you want to be able to have a better map for yourself as the decider not a map that was just until recently your perma ban so i think they need to i think that's what they need to focus on and obviously you know they 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 would benefit from players stepping up individually right nico is like Still up and down, uh, inconsistent, trying to find this form. Hunter even more so, right? Want to see... What's with Hunter, Yanko? You've got the direct line. What's going on, mate? Tell, tell us. Everybody wants to know what's going on with Hunter. I don't know, actually. I mean, when I talk to him, he's obviously saying he's putting in a lot of hours, right? Like trying to, you know, just get better at the game. But And he's not the type of a guy, I don't think, that's going to overthink it or try to do too much right it's just like you know trusting that things are going to work out eventually um i don't know if some of that is like yeah i don't want to make excuses for him um but it's just about having to find ways to have a bit more output um a little bit more um impact as well some of his spots are not you know amazing or where he's in a like position to do so necessarily but in others he has that opportunity so yeah just needs to step up basically is all there is to it it's such a g2 is such a weird team to talk about right now because every conversation and uh, for good reason like the eye test is is horrible and the individuals have, have been <laughs> so so swingy yeah horrible is a good way to put it <laughs> but they still made the semifinals of the major and they still made the semifinals here and it's like it's like they they come off as this like massive dysfunctional team with tons of fucking problems. The Nexa trade or the Nexa swap is still like highly scrutinized, but they're still making like semifinals at big events. It's because they get I, spoken about a lot, though, Jason. Yeah. Right? They have polarizing figures well, within the team. They get spoken yeah, yeah. about. It's a just lot always in such a funny conversation because I, you know, it's it's like if this was like any other team on like the rise, for instance. And obviously, there's the expectations there with the name of the players and the trophies they won. Well, last that's why year. fucking context matters. Like they're yeah. not one of those teams. They're a team that's like supposed to be winning now. They're a team that has arguably the best player in the game. In I Monacy. think it's an argument. I think he just straight up is the best player in the game at the moment. Yeah, and you, well, we haven't seen Dong for a little bit, so maybe that's the reason why. But yeah, I think you know for them it's different. And it's also how do they lose some of these games? Yeah, right? there are like, some fucking even hard, the mouse still game. Like you know, it's like you had eight six as CT on overpass, and you still lost the game it's like how how is that even like some of the round they won both pistols on that map um they just couldn't win some of the easier rounds like they just couldn't deliver and that's also you know like it's overpass you haven't played it that many times in officials on this map like i'm sure they learn a lot from the loss but still you know yeah. yeah, well, I guess now the runway for these teams is, I guess, for a G2 to make sure that you're competitive and that you're making positive strides. You would hope that a team like this between now and the next major is able to get like a trophy win or at least some grand final appearances, right, to bolster that confidence that they're going in the right direction. Because you think about how many big tournaments we're going to have between then and now. Um, Pro League, not by any stretch of the imagination in terms of the stage or anything along those lines but in terms of having the best teams or most of the best teams in the world out of you've got pro league you've got dallas you've got spring finals um we're gonna have cologne after the break we're gonna have the esports world cup we're going to have fall finals there's going to be a iem fall event i don't think they've announced where that is yet maybe they have um and then what else do we another pro league season uh there's going to it, it depends on if how many of these teams go to like the bet boom event that's going to be in Serbia. Like how many of the big names are going to be there? I haven't. I think it's only eight teams or something, right? So, eight, yeah. um, 
yeah, th- this is where for next year, why the landscape becomes a whole lot more enticing because of more names. But yeah, I think for G2 to try and get a trophy in the bag before the next major uh, to keep keep them at least satiated is is important. Um, and speaking of tournaments we have coming later in the year, a bit, I actually do have a bit of breaking news. Uh, this has just been tweeted by Blast Premier's account. Best of fives are coming to blast. You better keep your Sundays open as for the 2024 season, the spring, fall, and world finals, we played as best of fives. Cool. So there you go. There's uh, there's a bit, just as, as ESL with their uh, master's level events, like a Chengdu, for example, and uh, uh, the fall event, and then they have moved away from best of fives to best of threes. Uh, blast have, have moved into best of fives. So interesting. Very interesting indeed. Well, we've we've seen constantly over over you know Blast lifespan. They're always the kind of to you know contrasting DSL, willing to take a few more risks in terms of stuff. And I think it, it, I mean we've had the conversation plenty of times. You don't need to dive back into it, but I think it's it's a much more defensible decision when it's MR12 and the games are much much faster. Especially with you know if maps end up being a little bit more blowouty, which seems like it's happening more and more in MR12 because there's less chances to recover. I think that's cool. Let's see how it goes. Let's see how, I mean, it's not going to be seven hours. I'll tell you that. Yeah. They're going to be shorter overall for sure. I, I that's that, but I think, I think one of the things which, cause this conversation, not about what blast is doing, I think for their type of tournaments or for ESL's type of tournaments, like this is, this is companies who are um, looking to have more eyeballs. So it may, and have longer time of the matches and probably have minutes sold on watched. certain minutes. Watch exactly. Yeah. All that shit. But for a major, they, a lot of people are like, Oh, best of five final, which for me, it's like the world championship. So I'm all for it, but I, I can see the argument to be made. It's like, well, for the last what 11 grand finals up until this last one, we're all over two O's. So we might want to start having a couple of close grand finals, uh, that go that's, three maps and that justify it before we can maybe look at turning things into a best of five. That's exactly what the fucking dev said to me when I asked him about it. I was like, if you guys considered BO5 for the major finals, you're like, well, have we gotten three maps and a best? Of the-? And I was just like, yeah, that's, that's fair. Yeah. They so, were like, we just made the change to make games shorter. And now you want us to add more maps. And I was like, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's kind of fair too. <laughs> Good yeah, yeah. <laughs> a bit of a classic there. I think last to wrap up Chengdu, Mao is finally winning a playoff game, right? So, yeah, doing <laughs> celebration, confetti, fireworks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then they get you know smacked around by Face, who just who they just can't beat. I I didn't know this. Like it was mental. So in the last twenty pistols, Face is nineteen and one against Mao in pistols, and they won all four in that game too and converted. So it's one of those things where you know kind of. Good for both parties. Maus did something in the playoffs, right? FaZe finally won a tournament instead of losing in the grand final again, which maybe would have broken them just completely mentally. Um, so yeah, I think everyone kind of content with that. If FaZe didn't win that final, I'm sure they would have had like a meltdown, just like <laughs> a, we're always we're destined to second place, like just had an existential crisis of what is this life? What are we doing? This is the worst type of hell. Sure, on paper, it looks like we you know did awesome at these events, but the most gut-wrenching thing is to lose in the final. They just lost in a major final. It was only a week before. It's like, ah, the walls are coming, closing down. Carrigan saying this is the first time he's drained. So I think just for like the sheer relief for FaZe, to scoop that up, I think it's 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 huge because this team has been the most consistent team since the release of CS2. Even with the roster change of Frozen coming in, they didn't really skip a beat, did they? They just keep making these grand finals. And sure, the conversion rate... Um, actually, the conversion rate's not bad now, right? Isn't it four out of eight that they won? Chengdu, they came second at the major. So there's second at Katowice. Second at World Finals, second at Fall Finals, first CAC, first Thunder Pick, first Sydney. Well, it's also a new roster, right? Like, I mean, the just Frozen. So True. since adding Frozen, this is their first trophy. True. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. But I'm I'm happy to see them win. You know, that was good stuff. Good stuff, FaZe. Really good you stuff. You did FaZe. good. Yes. You did good. But Furia? April sixteenth, twenty twenty four. A date that will be etched in Counter Strike history. As the day that Furia finally read themselves of art and a little bit of Gary, which actually I'm afraid he'll still be in a position to make influential decisions, which is unfortunate, but at least they finally, finally <laughs> decided 
to move on from art. It was like so, it was actually like coming to a point where you just can't even watch anymore the games with him just buying every eco round, like just full buying and doing some shit. And then hearing to the casters like as well, trying to somehow justify it and explain it <laughs> to the audience. Like, well, the, he is, you know, the economy is where he's trying to put a dent in the opponent's economy. You know, he's it going to play in a close hand. Come on, Yanko, man. We're trying, man. We're trying, <laughs> Yanko, man. I know, I know. But, bro, like, that was the first, you know, that's what I see two days ago. But in the meantime, so much other information comes out and different statements and all this stuff. Art has a stream, of course, right? Like, to, to, to tell his side of the story or whatever, where there's so much to digest that i'm not even sure where to begin but i think i'd like to begin i guess With well veganism. probably probably the state the statement that they had on this like i saw it was like the move.gg where i saw this article and stuff where they're talking about you know what changes will come to furia in general right like first they'll have this sort of technical committee that will decide on some teams where it's the two owners, right, uh, Akari and and Jay Jame Padua, or however you pronounce his name, Fallen and Gary Jamie? himself, Jamie, I guess, yeah, and uh, Gary himself, right, and they'll decide on what to do in terms of you know do they promote their assistant coach and then give him like extra staff. I guess I have to say like this statement where they said I think it was Akari who said like you can't. A Brazilian organization with the Brazilian staff and Brazilian players Bro. can uh, everything 100% Brazilian will never win anything again. That's Bro. what Akari said on Gaules' stream. And my first thought is, why? <laughs> you know, why do you believe this? Which is interesting because what could be the answer to that question? Why would he form this opinion? Was because he firsthand, firsthand saw... He was do dealing with Art and Gary, bro. This is how bad it was. Like, it killed his faith in Brazil. He gave up. <laughs> this dude gave up on Brazil. I think that's unheard of in also, Brazilian CS. Like, you religiously, you vehemently defend Brazilian CS. Come to Brazil. You will never understand. And this dude is like, yeah, I don't understand. What a bold statement to make to from a Brazilian organization that has a Brazilian fan base on the stream of the biggest Brazilian co-streamer. <laughs> like that's one way to alienate a fan base. I, I'm like, I don't, I'm not tapped into the Brazilian scene. I wonder if there's any outrage about that at all, because that's a, that feels like it's such a crazy thing to say out loud in that, in that world. Dude, that's so crazy. I don't believe that statement at all. I, I think don't either. Absolutely. When you no, look at I the Brazilian think, teams and players I, I, around, I think absolutely like it could work. You know, sure, it might be tough to to build the roster because of the different contracts, contract, but there's yeah. so many, so much talent in Brazil, right? And there's yeah, I'm just gonna start listing players, right? Insani, Big Uzera, uh, those kids who have like decent or yeah, no, no way, way from Imperial. Lato, um, Lato was really good. Yeah, Dumao, right? Like. Um, we're just getting started, right? Well, like, also, like, also, like I, I mean, you also have to look at it from this sense too, where I feel like they've they've actually just fallen into the same exact trap that Astralis fell into years ago, where it was obvious that changes were needed, obvious is that obvious that changes should be made, and the organization stuck it out way too long, and now they no longer have the ability to go get the players who could improve the team and who who could get them to win. They've like failed at the opportunities that have been laying around to upgrade the roster and upgrade the lineup and, and remain competitive. And now they've they've just it feels like they've just they've just completely missed out. Now buyouts for certain players are going to be astronomically higher than they were a year, two years ago. Now you're going to be, you know, locked in by the business side of things. Now you have a lot less drawing power to the team than you might have had two years ago after the Rio Major. You know, like they they've they've missed some windows to actually make good upgrades and that's yeah i think they've they've just kind of they've they've mismanaged in the same way that astralis did yeah. but so but if if we take a step back right and this was this they need to build a new philosophy of how to play the game right because fury has been uh, art's been with furia for a very long time they have fallen there so immediately for me i look at fallen and, and i ask myself the question 
if Fallen is given the full reins without any influence and he gets to build the way that he wants to play the game and hopefully inspired by current meta, right? what we're seeing from other top teams and their approach to the game, and he's given the ability to make some personnel changes if that as if he so desires, which I think you know there's definitely a debate that you could, um, and is given a competent coach who shares. It doesn't even have to be the same vision, but a, a, a vision where they can actually bounce ideas and be creative and, and whatnot off of each other. Is that a recipe for success? Do we do we think that Fallen still has what's necessary? to take Furia back to the top of Counter-Strike. And I'm not saying, well, not Br- Furia, but Brazil to back to the top of Counter-Strike. And I'm not saying they have to be like a consistent top three or top five team in the world, but they should be a top 10 team in the world who always is in the conversation to make it to the playoffs or, or otherwise just miss out. Like they, they, the style of Counter-Strike they were playing was not comprehensive at all. It wasn't, it wasn't, close to the meta. And that's never really been the case for Fury. They've never really played on meta CS, but it, they also haven't been good in a decent period of time right now. So I, I don't know. Yanka, do you reckon Fallen is the answer to the 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 way that they see the game or, or could... Like, mate, get fucking Zach from Imperial. Like, they play fundamentally good Counter-Strike. Yeah, I mean... I don't know because it's been such a long... Like, Fallen's fucked himself a lot in the last, like, couple of years. You know, first with the, the Last Dance project and maybe even in before that in Liquid not being assertive enough of his position, right? Then the Last Dance thing, just kind of giving up on having a super competitive team by agreeing to play with FNX, um, you know, and then coming to Fury and accepting the fact that Art would remain on the team and Gary in my book, right? So... I don't know how much I want to, how much leeway I want to give him. Like, I really like Fallen. I think he has, you know, coached, having coached him in MIBR, he has an incredible mind for the game. Like, he's a guy who works a lot, who who f- puts a lot of focus on being up to date with the meta and watching other teams and what it is they do and how the game is evolving and all of that stuff. So I want to say that he's capable of playing a good style of Counter-Strike that will be competitive. Today, you know, I think his inherent like thoughts about the game, I think his approach is good. But the the question is like, I guess, you know, the other option would be just to remove him, you know, which is not going to happen. Like we see from this Furia statement that, you know, they don't have a lot of budget to work with and, you know, we'll see what the changes. So the, probably the core of the team or, or most certainly the core of the team will remain. So at that point, it's not even a question of what do you think? It's like, that's what's going to happen. Like he will have now finally at i guess at least the control of the team and the way they're going to play right and whoever the coach is is going to be there to facilitate his approach and help out and perhaps potentially give some pointers and like make his life easier right but that's like the next step for furia the art gary era is fucking finally over with rejoice furia fans and now you know you can at least see how it will look like when fallen has full control right but they have more problems like you know yuri has fallen off a cliff will this maybe rejuvenate him as a player right like can he do something who's gonna be the fifth because the player they're getting you know the academy player is just there for this tournament you know i don't think he's going to be a a permanent uh member fixture yeah right but it's just crazy to me some of the stuff in these statements right first of all in this statement from the team they're talking about how well you know we brought in fallen to uh, bring his approach to the game but then we had you know art and gary still there so that caused some issues it's like yeah no fucking shit how could you not see this coming from a mile away that's why you that's why you needed to remove him then like give me an explanation as to why you didn't remove art at that time gary so and so maybe i could like i could live with Gary staying as a coach and but you get but you remove art right and Gary sort of kisses the gets on his fucking knees kisses the ring <laughs> and says yes my liege I will do whatever you want to 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 fall and you know you are my master now right like I could live with that but this is you just wasted the fucking year bro I think it was 2021 um during the first season of pro league of that year where I was saying like art you know Fury is not gonna do shit until they remove art like, that's three years now, right? And this guy was just given room and given room and stayed on the team and, like, nothing was happening, 
right? The, I don't know. Like, and it's crazy to me, you know, the, the shit that he says on his stream and like the statement is like, if there was ever a, an example of a team being too loyal to a player, it's been fury at art. And then you go out and you start making these statements like, you know, and, and talk about what was going on in the team and basically just trying to like, I don't, it's not even necessarily like find excuses, but just like, what's the point on, of, all, of all the shit you were saying on stream? Like, you're just trying to make Furia look bad. Who gave you a fucking... Who kept... Who who left you in your job, in your position, for three years too long, probably. And suffered as an organization because of you. And your fucking bullshit. Like, it's crazy to me that he even doubles down and everything. Like, personally, man, like, a lot of people were tweeting at me and saying stuff like, oh, how are you going to celebrate and all that stuff? You know, I'm not gonna celebrate a guy being out of a job right like in in that sense but you're hoping that he can humble himself and understand like what he needs to change if he wants to be on a top team and have that opportunity and it just seems like that art is incapable of that he's just incapable of looking at the big picture and kind of self reflecting and saying like yeah maybe my thing is not really like working on this level of play right maybe i need to make some changes like that because he's talking about fucking making some changes and and doing and redoing everything and over the past year how he poured his heart and soul like into the team and it didn't work bro i still see the same shit that i've been seeing for the last five years you know you making a change would be you stop fucking buying mp9s in the second round where your team has usps and trying to justify it as if you're doing some next level fucking thing and everyone has to keep sucking on that tit and saying yes yes that he creates a lot of space it's so good like he fucking you know jedi mind tricked guys like Caserato to defend them i don't know what the fuck was going on like it's so clear to everyone watching from the outside this guy is a fucking bot like he, you know why that shit, you know who does that shit? Like those plays and it's like, guys who don't know how to have proper moves, like because th that you don't know how to replicate plays. So then you're just going for the random aspect because sometimes it will work. Like sometimes it will be successful. It's fucking incredible to me. Like that <laughs> whole thing, like, I don't know. And then instead of just being, just saying, thank you so much, Furia, for your time. You know, I wish... Could have done more. We had some great moments. Blah 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 blah. You shut the fuck up and you move on your way. You talk about how the Henny situation and this and that and how. And this is also another fucking thing, man. <laughs> like he's talking about. Oh yeah, like we could. You know, they were. We couldn't like drink. They would say if you have a game like on on Sunday, you can't get fucked up on Friday. Which I, you know, I don't know if that's like necessarily true. If you couldn't do it the night before, that's a hundred percent true. Right, but all this sort of bullshit. Let me tell you, and this thing about bringing your girlfriends to events and all that stuff, like, bro, I was vehemently against that. But when I first joined, like, uh, a team, you know, they had those rules in place that it's it was just already all sorted out because the tournament was close, right? I lost a game at the major, like, I had a game that we lost the opening round of the major where a player was like distraught because he had a fight with his girlfriend like the day before. That was at the tournament. I've had in the fucking major playoffs in between maps as I'm going over like the next map with my player talking about, okay, we're one zero, you know, like zero down, some adjustments and so on. I have his girlfriend somehow fucking show up backstage, you know? And, like, hugs him and, and whatnot and some shit like that. Like, you know, you're telling me, like, that's a good thing? Like, that's that should be okay for things to happen? Like, there, I mean, look, there's, there's I'm so, strongly in there's your so camp, much there, shit, There's so much shit, especially the, you know, like, some of those players that have been there for a while, right? Like, the veteran players, not, not of this post-COVID new generation, right? Like, they thought they could do whatever the fuck they wanted just because they won a couple of tournaments or they were, like, good for a while doing that. It's like, bro, that's not how it works. You know, you can't be drinking until 3 a.m., like, while you're still in the tournament. Like, it, you, you just can't be doing that, you know? And it's so Those funny that he gone. mentions it about fucking Henny or whoever who notoriously missed the fucking grand final. They were mapped down because they were fucked up. Like, you know, they couldn't show up for the game. Like, you think there's a reason for why these <laughs> rules are in place? <laughs> That's actually fucking awesome. All right, I need some water.
Oh man, dude, I my favorite thing about all the things that aren't said on a stream was the the team forcing them to go vegan. I I find that so fucking funny for some reason. I I almost I almost can't believe that was actually I I can't see a world in which like a coach or like an esports management or anyone comes up and says, "Yeah, guys, I'm going to need you to go vegan." Um I'd love to hear the full context of that I know, like, there, from the other side as that's well. That's got to be like, like misconstrued. Absolutely. I don't know why I would you it's... why would you be trying to influence people's diet like in that way unless they were you know bro, see, getting morbidly obese. See all the obese. shit that Art says like that's probably them just telling them bro you can't have pizza for breakfast and then come to play a game and for him that's going vegan right like the, <laughs> that that's how I that's what I how I interpret those fucking statements right because no one in their right mind would force anyone to go fucking vegan like. But unless it's the girlfriend who came backstage, yeah, of course. But uh, <laughs> yeah, she might be able to. We've heard, you know, examples of keeping watching about your nutrition, right? On on game day can help a lot. Notoriously, the ends team and all of that stuff. I mean, but, yeah, uh, yeah. Yes, Jason. No, I was just gonna say about this whole like art being removed. I remember Yanko and I just going hard in the paint when Fallen joined the team, and them not and them having both as any. We made like a big point about you know it's so insane to bring Fallen in as an IGO and you still have art there. I, and I I think at the end of the day, like just looking at them at the major, it was so clear this team was just broken and done. Like they 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 looked. You know, if I want to talk about a team looking like disconnected, like they're all on different pages. That was that was Furia at the major to me. So I don't know if that's like juggling back and forth with IGL. It sounded like uh, what did Art say on his stream uh, about the map veto? Yeah, that Hang Fallen on. was IGL. That Fallen again, yeah. Fallen was IGLing again. So they've obviously. They've obviously gone back and forth a couple of times to like try and make things work. And I, and I think, you know, this, it's just like it, all the issues that we saw when Fallen joined the team over a year ago is like, or like a year ago is, is exactly what seemed to happen at, at the end of the day. So yeah, I mean, this obviously all makes sense. No, <laughs> well, I, I, I've, I've stopped like for me with certain teams when they just look like they, they don't care, which is, they obviously care, but they, they, uh, can't see the forest for the trees. Um, like that was like eg right i don't want to put fear on the same level as eg but for those guys like i was just like well if these guys want to do stupid fucking things i don't even gonna bother talking about them like i just i don't care i don't i don't feel strongly for the fury account with all this stuff like it's well you made your bed you gotta lie in it the only thing that i want to be a little bit frustrated with is you have a player of k serato's abilities that you're wasting that's the bit that irks me the most that can't even um, irk me because he's had chances to get out yeah, he could have gone to Liquid, right? Twice. Twice they've approached him, and both yeah. times he said no. So then then I can't even get upset at that because he's, he's he's tried chosen. to be loyal to this org, which has its qualities and, and does show you know some positives. But we've seen what happens to these players who have very high skill ceilings, can contribute a lot to teams, but stick around longer than they should. They end up being tabs and in big. Um, so I... Yeah, for me, like I guess the good. I wish that yeah. I wish there weren't contracts weren't there. That that that's the bit that upsets me the most. Like the business side of this just fucking ruins all of the awesome prospects. Yeah, and and I do I do feel that's one area where I do feel for Furia in some to some degree is all the stories we hear about how crazy the contracts and the buyouts are in the Brazilian scene. Um, but but again, it is like kind of a situation where. They've that the, that's just kind of the world that they've they forced themselves into to be trapped in a, in, a, in a situation where you are just kind of bottlenecked by by your business options that you have to get other players within within the region or within the scene. Um, so I mean, there's there's certainly enough responsibility to fall on their feet. I'd say if you want a reason to be positive uh, for any sense, the nice thing about Fallen getting his control of the team and being like the in-game leader without having to have a second voice that has been a strong voice in the team for so long. Um, Fallen's like a player's IGL. His focus as an as an in-game leader is to craft a game plan where he wants his star players to have everything that they want. He wants them to be as comfortable as he wants. So that's when you go to Caserato and Yuri and say, "What do you?" you like to do what do you want to do that we're not doing let's let's try it you know let's put together a game plan let's craft some tactics and some strategies and some setups where you guys got to be put in a position to make the plays um, and be in the spots that you want to be in so uh, at the very least you have an IGL who's going to be much more uh, focused on activating the star players and much more focused on giving them exactly what they want yeah 
well, it didn't sell that to you. It did. It did it doesn't nah. feel like, oh, okay. Nah, I don't know, man. Like I, I like Yanko's point about like, I know a lot of players. If they listen, they're like, nah, you know, I'm always traveling and I never see my girlfriend and stuff. I get it. You have very little sympathy it. for that, though. As I do, yeah. I never see my family, so. Bro, you know, that's, I, I know that's fine. Like, I, I don't have a problem with you seeing your girl, girlfriend, right? You're not at a tournament every week, especially when it, when it was COVID. I don't know how COVID, you know, what the protocols were. COVID, was, this COVID and that. was really hard for me coaching because I wanted to have the no girlfriend rule as well. But during COVID, when they hadn't seen girlfriends for over a year and got to see them only when we're in Europe for a boot camp, it felt like a very difficult thing to say no to if that makes sense and i never had any issues with girlfriends at, at like the boot camps or practice but you know it's just kind of weird yeah it's like for me is you know you can ever come over for a week when we just have online fucking practice or some online games or something like that like i don't know it's tough but it is it's part of the job the job is what it is you know and like if we're talking about normal conditions when you have events and stuff like events are not the time to to bring girlfriends in like i understand if it's a big event you make the playoffs like your family's gonna come there your girlfriend it's okay and i always and i said this to my players when it did happen like at these tournaments i said listen you have your obligations to the team right and that's gonna take a good amount of your day but when you have your own private time i don't give a fuck how you spend it as long as it's not affecting your performance the next day right like meaning you don't go and get fucked up so the next day you're like hungover or you know don't stay up until 4 a.m even playing you know even playing cs don't do it like and then only get five hours of sleep you know but if you want to go and have dinner and have food with your family and your you know girlfriend and you've done all the things you had to do for tomorrow and you feel good you feel you know individually you feel like you're in a good spot yeah i don't give a fuck you know like i think that's reasonable right like that's sensible the problem is, unfortunately, you know, some of just like in general in life, not all relationships are good relationships. Some of them are toxic. Some of them don't work out. Some guys are assholes and, you know, um, get what's, what's, what, what's coming to them, right? But so that's like the part that you want to avoid fucking happening at a tournament, right? And, and causing like fucking problems. But yeah, it, all right, it, look. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. I just wanted to say we, we only have about 10 minutes left until we have to go on this call. So I was just wondering if there was anything that we wanted to close with uh, for the next 10 minutes before we, uh, we, have, to, we have to go. Mm. I think it's just, for me, it's mad. Like I hope that Gary won't have too much influence. And maybe I'm just too harsh on this guy, right? Because I think, you know, if you're... If you were condoning it, like you're part of the problem. Like if you were there and observe, and but then Art said that at some point I think Gary wanted to remove him or something like that, right? And Fallen spoke highly of Gary, but just in general, it's important that uh, I, I I definitely disagree with the whole Brazilian part that you can't like, and you know you want to bring a European coach, like an international coach, like a big profile name if you can, like who. Who do you want to, you know, who's that name that you think is going to revolutionize the way you approach stuff? And they're also talking Kassad. about, the, <laughs> they're also talking about like BSL when, when MIBR brought them in 2000. Bro, that's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. that's night and day. That's 20 not years comparable ago. at all. Like nowadays, the only, all you need to do is go to Europe and boot camp. They even have like a house or whatever in Malta. Like you have this opportunity to play against European teams. You can watch all these games. You can like, you know, and why? We saw Luminosity in 2016 get it done, like out of nowhere. Why? Do, and you have the guy who did it back then. Like, why don't you trust them that they can, you know, do something similar again in a way? Like, that's just crazy to me. Like, where is all of that coming from? It's coming from Art being your captain for the last six years, you know? So <laughs> I guess that makes sense. But yeah, I think this technical committee or whatever, bro, just let fall and do whatever the fuck he wants. You know, like what he wants... Try to help him out, but don't be one of the, like, oh, yeah, you know better than he or anything like that. Just fucking give him the keys to the kingdom, right? And let him try and figure it out and give him, like, a fifth player that's, you know, not completely shit, right? Like, and give them a chance. And hopefully Yuri can play on a higher level and maybe they can get some results and get some confidence. 
Only a little bit shit. Not completely shit, just a little bit shit. Mm. Yeah, someone who, you know, has played professional Counter-Strike before would be a good place and to yeah, start. And yeah, one imagine. last thing I wanted to, I forgot about this. When he's talking about, Archie's talking, I was I couldn't have a social life, I couldn't drink, I couldn't smoke, couldn't use nicotine to calm down, I couldn't get stressed, I couldn't complain when we lost a round. Complaining was the thing I heard the most all day. Uh, quotation marks, Art, you have to be a better athlete, you have to be a leader, you can't complain. This is 100% true. No fucking bitching while you're playing. What are you fucking complaining about? Like, oh, this team is so bad. Look at look at what they're doing. I hated this. Like, and and my and I tr- yeah. fought really hard for them to stop doing this. It's like, don't fucking complain about it. Find an answer. Find a way Figure to beat it, it out. Right? Like, yeah. otherwise, what's you want to? You know, like you're you're allowing this also to affect you to get frustrated. It's like it's a hundred percent true. Like, oh yeah, and then he's gonna then what that happens and he goes and buys an MP9 next round and rushes into somewhere. Like, ah look at this guy, man. What's this fucking angle and all that dumb shit. It's like for from this part that the part that he's complaining about actually sounds really sensible from Furia's side of things. And it's probably a little exaggerated, right, from his point of view. So I think in that part is fine. You want to keep your like you want to keep things in the team professional, right? And yeah, no wonder he would complain about that. All right, all right, all right. Let's let's quickly let's quickly do this, right? So, when do you guys land? Uh, Sunday, Sunday midnight. Sunday midnight. afternoon. Yeah. So afternoon. Saturday night or Sunday, Sunday going into Monday? Sunday going into Monday. Fuck, Jason. When do you land? Uh, I I'll check right now, but it's like Sunday early afternoon. Okay. I can try right. maybe and change this chat if you have. No, that's all right. I was just going to say we could do an learned, episode by like Sunday if I you guys were landing on Sunday. I 3 p.m., but. so I'm available Sunday evening. Me and Jason could do one. We can get someone else, Janko, so you don't have to work. We just do a live one or something from here. We can talk to Harry or Hugo yeah, or grab a talent. Matthew or fucking whoever and see if they want to come and to my apartment and sit and have a conversation for a couple of hours about that little video game called Counter-Strike, I think it's called. Um, yeah. Okay, I was just seeing when everyone's getting here, but obviously Pro League next week starts on Tuesday. Pro League's going to be hard, I feel, to get to get episodes in during the week the way we have in the past. Yes, there's no time off. There's no time off. It's six there's broadcast days, off. media day, six broadcast day, media day, and then and then, yes, Jason, and then like five. Yes, but it's but okay. we will we, we will can, find a way. We will find. We a can way. adjust some things. We can definitely adjust some things to make it work. It's going to be, it's going to be an awful lot of Counter Strike for the first two weeks. Come week number three, uh, it's going to lighten up a little bit. So um, yeah, that, uh, definitely. I think week three we should be able to get something going at the bare minimum. But I think we, we we're going to be okay. It's going to work out. Everything's going to happen in terms of getting players. That's obviously going to be the priority, but. Um, that's also quite difficult as well. But we'll give it a we'll go, see. guys. We'll give yeah. it a go. Uh, we're going to give yeah. the old college try, like we always do. All right. All right. All right. Well, let's take a breather. Get out of here. We got a meeting. Send me the files, and uh, we'll get this bad boy uploaded. All right. Good. Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye. Peace. Peace.